Okay, we're gonna make name mandalas. Around the circle, this is radial symmetry. It's the same around the circle. So right now you think it's just a really cool abstract design, but if we cover up and look at just one piece of the triangle, you could see that I wrote the word art. And then art is repeated around the circle. So here's the steps to make this. First step, we're going to take a template and you need to do one triangle. We're gonna do bubble letters. So I'm gonna plan out my bubble letters with my last name, Davis. You need to pick three, four, or five letters. So I'm gonna do D, small, then medium, bigger, tallest, tallest, really light with pencil. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create bubble letters by connecting the top to the bottom line. We wanna make sure it touches the top and the bottom so that it flows around the circle. You could kind of see how the A's connect all around here. If we don't have it touch the top and the bottom, it won't connect. I'm going to do this with Sharpie. You do it with pencil first. Underneath, I'm putting a table saver that catches the mess, and I'm gonna go next to them, from the top line to the bottom, next to them, and inside of it for a letter D. I'm gonna go next to the A, next to the A, top to the bottom, inside for a triangle. Next to the V, next to the V, above the V, next to the I, next to the I, and then connect the S. Just like that. Let me show you how not to do it. You do not wanna do it where you do the letters close. See how they don't touch exactly? They are getting bigger, but it doesn't connect to the top line. So what I need you to do is sometimes I'll tell you, your letters need to grow. So if I say that, you have to connect it to the top like this. Okay, we only need one good one. So I'm gonna do this one, my Davis letters. And what you have to do is you have to fold it on the line. We're gonna create a symmetrical piece. This is symmetrical like butterfly wings, the same on either side of the line. You're going to flip it over and you're gonna look through and you'll see a backwards version of your name. If it's hard to see, we have a light panel. You could also use a window. And now you could see where I have to trace. With pencil, I'm gonna trace my backwards D, then A, and make sure I get all of the pieces. I'm taking my time. And then I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna check my work to make sure it's symmetrical, the same across the line of symmetry. If I open it up, this is my line of symmetry and it looks the same on either side. I'm going to put some Sharpie on there and then I'm gonna get started with the next step. After highlighting the lines and making sure that they connect, I'm going to flip it over on the back and color with crayon. I can kind of see where I need to color and I'm just gonna press really hard with the black crayon. This is how we're gonna transfer. After you color, you're gonna cut it out. Cut it so that the two pieces are connected. Okay, now that I have my template with the two pieces connected and my black crayon colored on the back, it's time to transfer. When you transfer, you can't just put it in the middle of the circle. You have to put it so that the curve matches the curve. I actually prepared these pieces to put so that you know exactly where to put your template. You can put this circle piece and you can see the missing piece of the puzzle. And that'll just help you make sure you're in the right spot for when you transfer. When you transfer, you want to make sure the curve is there and it's straight lined up. You're gonna use a pencil or a pen, something that has a sharp point, and you're just gonna press from one side to the other on each one of these Sharpie lines. Press on only the things you would like to keep. And it's really important to stay focused and calm while doing this. You're going to make sure that you don't miss any spots by going from one side to the other. You're pressing hard, and as you're pressing, some magic is happening. It's actually science. The force of the pencil point is transferring the wax of the crayon onto the cardboard round. You're just gonna continue to do that until 
You get all of the stuff. Don't move it beforehand, don't peek. I know you wanna peek, but make sure you have all of your lines because it would be hard to line them back up. So let me pull it off. I have all of my lines and there it is. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna check. Okay, I have my shape for my D, all the parts for my A. I missed this part in my letter V. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm just gonna write that in so I have it. Now for the next piece, using the template, you can kind of just fold it over on itself. And now you know exactly where the next piece goes. Match the curve to the curve. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna press on all of these lines. And when I say press on all the lines, I don't mean just press, that's not gonna do anything. I have kids that get confused. You also can't use a Sharpie because it's not hard enough. You need to use something with a point like a pencil or a pen. Let me speed it up and we'll get to the next piece of the puzzle. Okay, for the last piece, you're going to put it on and you wanna make sure everything lines up. Sometimes kids overlap a little bit and there is a space. Do you see how there's this plain space here? We don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure that when we do this, you create a line that's straight across from the other pieces and it's equal amount of space on either side. Then again, you're gonna press on all the letters and then we're gonna do that magic where I speed it up and then I'm going to make sure I go around with my Sharpie connecting everything. Here we go. Okay, now that it's all transferred around the circle, you're gonna go around with pencil and make sure that they all connect. I connected these, it created a six-sided shape, a hexagon, and then I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna connect all of these letter Ds that kind of creates a flower. Make sure that I have the center in each of the Ds with those half circles. And then you can see how I'm gonna just connect the letter A's. Make sure it's all there. You're gonna notice if you had space between the last piece, you're probably gonna have to connect a lot of things. So maybe I could go in really quickly with that and just fill in anything I missed. And then I'm going to just on every line, put some Sharpie and get it ready for coloring. I'm gonna speed it up. I'm highlighting starting in the center and going around. As I'm highlighting, I'm creating rings or circles within circles, which is a mandala. Some are geometric shapes and others are organic, which don't have a name, but we could describe them. Next, we're gonna color. When you color, you're gonna pick a color family. You're gonna pick three, four, or five colors. I picked cool colors, greens, blues, and purples. You're going to pick colors that are in a family and each letter can be a different color. So you could see that I'm coloring my V's with the purple, and then you could see that I pick a different color to color the spaces in between. As you color, you want to work around the rings, and you want to make the letters kind of camouflage in. So don't make them only one color. Make different colors as you go. Here's my finished product. Check over to make sure that you colored it all the way in. I left some white space on purpose. If you could justify leaving white space as a part of your color scheme, that's okay. But make sure your craftsmanship is good. When you color with the markers, you're going around the outside and then back and forth taking steps to fill it in. Make sure it's nice and neat. And once you're done, let's get ready to display it. I can't wait to see what you make.